In a previous video, we saw that damaging tensile stresses can arise from inhomogeneous deformations caused during the drying of an initially saturated body. In this video, we take a closer look at factors affecting this process to better understand the role of exposure conditions. To avoid stress during drying, we want the pore pressure to be uniform. As this sketch indicates, evaporation at the surface creates capillary pressure that causes contraction of the solid phase and also sucks liquid from the interior of the body. If flow inside the body is fast compared to the rate of evaporation, then the pore pressure remains nearly uniform and the stress is low. However, if the flow is resisted by small pores, evaporation is fast, and or the body is large, then a damaging pressure gradient may develop. In that case, the surface contracts faster than the interior, causing tensile stress that may result in cracking at the drying surface. Let us start with building stones. Most of these have pores too large to generate capillary pressure comparable to their tensile strength. To illustrate this, this plot compares the pore size in two kinds of limestone, Indiana limestone and Cordova cream limestone, and a typical cementitious mortar. It shows, from right to left, the amount of water that would fill these materials if, starting from a fully dry state, they gradually filled with water, starting with the largest pores and progressively entering smaller and smaller pores. The value farthest to the left indicates the total volume of porosity. None of the materials shown have pores larger than about 100 microns. In the limestones, about half the pores have diameters larger than 1 micron. This is seen by the curve height at that pore size being about half the full height reached by each curve on the left-hand side of the graph. Additionally, neither of the limestones has diameters less than about 0.05 microns, which is seen by the curves being level to the left of that value. In the mortar, most of the pores are smaller than 0.1 microns. To estimate the drying stress in these materials, we must specify the moisture distribution. For this, let us consider a plate, initially of thickness 2H, that is drying from both top and bottom surfaces. We denote by small z the position as a fraction of H, so that z equals plus 1 and minus 1, respectively define the top and bottom exterior surfaces where evaporation takes place, while z equals 0 is the horizontal plane of symmetry. Since evaporation occurs from both opposite sides, the stress distribution is symmetrical, and we will therefore focus on the top half between z equals 0 and z equals 1. The vertical axis on this graph shows the fraction of pores that are saturated and that we denote SL. Initially, we consider the body to be fully saturated, so the saturation profile is initially a saturated line at SL equals 1. We then introduce a dimensionless time tau, which is equal to 0 at the time drying starts, and equal to 1 once the drying is completed. With this in hand, we first consider the case of fast evaporation and or materials with fine pores, making it difficult for water to reach the surface. We thereby obtain the following sequence of profiles as drying progresses. These are steep, showing a sharp drop on the right side where drying takes place. In contrast, much flatter profiles are obtained for slow drying rates and or materials with large pores that allow the liquid saturation to be more uniform 
through the depth of the body. The stress on the body depends on the capillary pressure P in the pores and on the volume fraction of pores containing liquid, so the stress is proportional to SL times P. In addition, the pores that have been drained by evaporation contain a liquid film on the pore walls that generates capillary pressure. The stress therefore depends on the effective pressure, Pf, which is equal to SL times P, plus the integral of P over SL from the current local saturation SL to full saturation where SL equals 1. The integral accounts for the pressure contributed by the drain pores. The average shrinkage of the drying body depends on the average value of the effective pressure, Pf. The stress, sigma x, from non-uniform shrinkage is proportional to the difference between the average pressure Pf and the local effective pressure Pf. Tensile stresses are by definition positive and the pore pressure is negative. Therefore, tension results when the local effective pressure is more negative than the average effective pressure, making their difference positive. Let us examine what this means for the Indiana limestone and the typical mortar. Both have tensile strengths of about 3 MPa, so they would both crack if the tensile drying stresses exceed that value, and possibly micro-crack if they are somewhat lower. Let us start with the Indiana limestone. Using the steep profile, representing fast drying, the maximum tensile stress is only about 0.1 MPa, and the value is even lower for slow drying. Thus, for this limestone, no damage will occur even under harsh drying conditions. A similar result is achieved with Cordova cream limestone. In contrast, if the mortar is subjected to the steep gradient, the tensile stress at the surface is found to be about 7.6 MPa, which is much higher than its tensile strength of about 3 MPa, so surface cracking is expected. A freshly poured mortar or concrete would have relatively large pores until hydration of the cement fills the spaces between particles, but it would also have very low strength, so if rapid evaporation is allowed, tensile stresses sufficient to cause cracking can occur. The same is true for earthen materials such as adobe. Such cases of drying damage in the fresh state are often referred to as plastic shrinkage cracking. In our next video, mitigating drying shrinkage stresses, we will examine methods to protect materials against damage resulting from drying shrinkage. In conclusion, stress arises during drying if the shrinkage is not uniform and this can lead to cracking. Higher stresses occur in bodies that have a large proportion of pores with diameters lower than about 0.1 microns when they are subjected to rapid drying. Tension results wherever the local contraction is greater than the average contraction of the body. Damage results when such tensile stresses exceed the strength of the material, so weak materials, such as mud or fresh concrete, may crack under modest stresses.